In the beginning of the series, Kishimoto revealed that Gohan and Piccolo's relationship has been an inspiration for Boruto and Sasuke's bond. However, with the release of Two Blue Vortex, we are getting a Dragon Ball reference every chapter, which is totally insane. Like the Uzuhiko, for example, is a combination of three abilities from Dragon Ball, and even Boruto's return is a callback to future trunks. So, is this all just a coincidence, or is Kishimoto copying the concepts of Toriyama to elevate his work? Does this mean that we are about to see time travel in the story very soon? Let's find out. Kishimoto has acknowledged Toriyama's work being a huge inspiration for Naruto. The energetic personality of Goku played a vital factor during the creation of Naruto's character. Not only that, the intense and dynamic battle sequences in Dragon Ball have also influenced the fight scenes of Naruto. What's interesting is that the concept of a celestial creature invading the planet, which leads to the birth of an overpowered offspring, has also been inspired from Dragon Ball. Asusukis are basically the Saiyans of Naruto-verse. The primary narrative curve that Kishimoto applied to his story was the domino effect of Kaguya's arrival. The descendants of the rabbit princess created their own clans, which eventually crafted the entire lore of Naruto. The Shinjutsu of Kaguya propagated in her successors, with some of them unlocking the Sharingan, while others awakened the Byakugan. Nevertheless, half Saiyans are said to have more raw potential than their parents in Dragon Ball. But in case of Boruto, something similar has happened with Himawari. The most broken character in the show after Shibai is currently Daemon. In the third chapter, he didn't react much to the planetary feat that Boruto has achieved with Uzuhiko and he kinda underestimated him too. However, the same hacks character was shown to be completely shocked when he felt a strange intensity from Himawari. This only means that the daughter of Naruto has the potential to surpass the whole Uzumaki family. Now you guys could say the rules must be same for everyone, so why couldn't Boruto impress Daemon even after 3 years of training? Well, the short answer would be the fusion of Momoshiki, which has apparently suppressed the raw potential of Boruto. The DNA overlap has concealed his true Osusuki power that Momoshiki pointed out in episode 65. Talking about fusion, I think even the time when Momoshiki and Boruto became one was also derived from Dragon Ball Z. I think Code might be inspired from Cell and I will explain in a moment how. In order to defeat him in Dragon Ball, Piccolo and Kami had fused to become one. Similarly, Boruto and Momoshiki doing the same thing is not out of question and this also teases the most hype theory of the year. We know Kami was the guardian of earth in Dragon Ball and the name literally means God. So Momoshiki being Kami could also mean that he would unveil his true identity as Shibai the Osusuki God. Talking about Uzuhiko, the similarities that this technique shares with different powers from Dragon Ball is totally insane. But before we get there, let's take a look at a few more mind-blowing analogies. The prominent thing which implies Boruto taking the Toriyama route is the introduction of Osusuki Gods and the Cyborgs. Both of these concepts have been implemented in the God of Destruction arc and Cell arc respectively. The Cyborg siblings Aida and Demon are too similar to Android 17 and 18. Amaro seems to be inspired from Dr. Jiro, which makes base code imperfect cell, and when we remove his limiters, he becomes perfect cell. However, the fact that he has been through a lot of L's and disrespect in the story so far, it could be that the current form of code is derived from semi-perfect cell and his perfect form is yet to come. Now that code has been given a time limit to live, it's very likely for him to absorb the tentails somehow to transform into a formidable version of himself. If not that, then I think Ishimoto will somehow find a way to give Code a legendary glow up which would be the payback of all the L's that he has faced so far. So what if even this transformation of Code would be derived from the events of Dragon Ball Z? A few videos back I mentioned the theory of Aida and Demon getting devoured by the claw grinds which would turn them into mini divine trees. Their also Suki prowess could lead to the cultivation of the divine fruit which might be consumed by Code that would make him attain his final form. Something similar happens in Dragon Ball Z when Imperfect Cell absorbs Android 17 and 18 to become perfect. Perfect cell. Considering the number of obvious similarities between the two narratives is definitely a blunt possibility. Coming on to the analogies from Two Blue Vortex, let's start off from the one that we saw in Chapter 3. The chapter was titled Uzuhiko and was all about this planetary variant of Boruto's Rasengan. It seems to be a power which uses the chakra of the planet's rotation to deal with the opponent. It can apparently be only used when Boruto is in physical contact with the target. After the Jutsu worked on code, it became evident that he couldn't touch Boruto. This could be because it disrupts the balance and equilibrium of the victim, making it virtually impossible for them to land an attack on the caster. However, the way 
Naruto was able to evade Code's attack was similar to two different abilities from Dragon Ball Super. And the mechanism behind this planetary Rasengan might also be inspired from another technique. The very first one is Ultra Instinct and when most people saw Boruto dodging Code's attack effortlessly, they quickly related this power to Goku's divine ability. While it's not that Boruto has gained an exact copy of Ultra Instinct, it's just a disruption in the mind of his opponent which grants him a defensive feat. The next power from Dragon Ball Super which is also similar to Uzuhiko is the time skip. I'm not talking about this long awaited time skip that we are witnessing in the story but the time skip power of a character named Hit from Universe 6. Basically this ability allows him to momentarily freeze time for a fraction of second during which he can move freely and attack his opponents even though it wasn't what exactly Uzuhiko does. But this jutsu definitely seemed like a time stoppage power at first glance. However we shouldn't forget that this concept has also been implied by Kishimoto in case of Momoshiki. We haven't got a full fledged explanation nation on time Shinjutsu which has appeared multiple times in the story. So maybe this time skip power of Hit could provide us a brief explanation. The duration of Hit's time skip has been shown to fluctuate, initially starting at 0.1 second and eventually increasing to 0.5 seconds. During this time Hit is able to move at incredible speeds, launching devastating attacks that his opponents are unable to respond, implying this in Momoshiki's case. Even though he ain't able to contact anyone except Boruto when he uses the time Shinjutsu, it could be that only a fraction of second passes in the real world when he talks to Boruto using this ability. Talking about abilities, there is a power used by Goku in Dragon Ball Z known as Spirit Bomb which might also be similar to Uzuhiko Rasengan. The Spirit Bomb is created by Goku when he gathers the energy of all the living beings on earth. However, in case of Uzuhiko, it is created with the chakra of a planet's rotation which is similar to the concept of natural energy and this energy stays in the victim's body forever just like the planet's rotation. This is why Code had apparently lost lost his senses after getting in contact with this power. In other words, both the Uzuhiko and Spirit Bomb gather energy from outside sources. While Boruto's technique utilizes the natural energy of the planet, the Spirit Bomb gathers the power of every living being on the planet. Now before moving on to the next similarity, take a look at this panel. It's from the Kaguya arc of Naruto Shippuden and many people think that this entity in the background is Boruto who traveled back in time. Well there is a time traveler in Dragon Ball Z who might have influenced Kishimoto when he wrote the character of Boruto. I'm talking about Future Trunks and the very first thing that he did upon returning to the past was to kill Frieza with a slash of his sword. Surprisingly, Boruto is also a swordsman and the creatures whom he killed by his sword in Two Blue Vortex look a lot like Frieza too. This can't be a coincidence at all. Kishimoto has really cooked with the plot of Boruto by taking ingredients from the Dragon Ball franchise. This could also mean that time travel will soon be introduced to the plot and maybe that's how he confidently mentioned the possibility of the worst future. He must have already lived that future either by time traveling or with the foresight ability. Boruto being similar to future trunks also increased the chances of Himawari symbolizing Gohan. The way Gohan surpassed Goku in the cell arc, it's very likely that Himawari will also go beyond most of the characters in terms of power level. This explains why Daemon was afraid of her. She is already being set up to become the most broken prodigy of the show who might even surpass Boruto. Even in Dragon Ball Z, Gohan and future trunks share an interesting dynamic even though they are not blood related. So we can expect Himawari defeating a great main villain at some point in the story. It could even be code with his new power up and a defeat by the hands of Hima would be the biggest and the final L that he will face. This also enhanced the possibility of Boruto being a time traveler just like future trunks but I think he would most likely have a time related Shinjutsu which allows him to see the fate of places and people. Maybe that's why he keeps his right eye closed in the time skip. The Jogan might have the power to let him see the fate of of anyone. Another thing could be that he already knows the future that he has foreseen is unavoidable but he is still trying his best to reach a different outcome. This is why he asked Kawaki in the prologue scene if this was the only possible outcome. Make sure to subscribe if you are enjoying the video and don't forget to join my discord where I drop sneak peeks of all my videos before they are released. If Kishimoto is actually taking the Toriyama route for Boruto, it's pretty much clear that we might get to see different Osusuki gods and maybe each of them will have their own universe too. The way Boruto unlocked a planetary Rasengan, it's safe to say that he can destroy this planet as well. So now that his power level has gone way beyond everyone on earth, 
it's the right time to explore the universe and unveil the secrets of the Osusukis. Momoshiki hinted the existence of multiple Osusuki gods back in chapter 79. The broken Osusuki panels from Ten Tails Dimension also hint at the same. Kaguya and Ishiki were dead but their panels were still intact. Momoshiki and Kinshiki fused and the monster lived as a parasite inside Boruto but it did not affect their tablets at all. This means that the only reason for the Osusuki tablet to break is the ascension of a being to a higher plane of existence or simply when they become an Osusuki god. This means two Osusukis who turned gods had landed on the planet before. One of them must be responsible for wiping out the Uzumaki clan and the other one must have dealt with the Chinoikis. They both must have then changed the memories of mankind which was even mentioned by Momoshiki. I think the one who wiped out the Chinoiki clan was Jashin Osusuki because there is no reason for Kishimoto to leave a plot hole in the story which could become the most insane foreshadowing. Make this video cross 500 likes and I will create a full video on Jashin in the Osusuki God. The mysterious statues from Kaguya's dimension also hint at the arrival of the new Osusukis. Next we have the hyperbolic time chamber which has been condensed into Kawaki's Daikokuden dimension. A realm where time slows down so much that Naoto and Hinata don't seem to have aged in the time skip period. So is it fair to provide Kawaki a dimension with literally unlimited time? Well I think the answer might be a yes. Boruto's new planetary feat only reflects the amount of unreal training that he has done in the time skip. He had brilliant mentors like Koji and Sasuke while Kawaki had no such advantage. But even after that, he was able to awaken the full Dharma eye which is only possible with some hardcore training. The Kawaki training in a realm which is similar to the hyperbolic time chamber is completely fair in my opinion. But is it fair for Kishimoto to implement all these concepts from Dragon Ball into his story? Do you believe he has stolen ideas from Toriyama or can they be seen as products of inspiration? Let me know in the comments what you think and don't forget to check out these videos for more amazing stuff. I'll see you next time.